The People's Court, today at 4.30. Take your legs to ride here. Find his legs in the kingdom. She is somewhere within this maze of rooms and oh, really halls, and I can't find her. So long, the kitchen is a mile and a half away. I mean, I thought I did a lot of running around at six. Yeah, you have to wear roller skates to work in this place. Well, enjoy your medieval breakfast. Well, thank you. Uh, ham and eggs aren't exactly medieval. Well, I just thought it sounded more romantic. So, have you heard anything from Joey yet? Not a word. No, we're running out of patience. We don't get some answers soon. Uh, good morning, good morning, my dear friend. Uh, Mr. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, dottore. You had a very pleasant rest, madame? <laughs> not really. My blue little ones. Run along. What are you doing here? Do not let me keep you from doing your duties. <laughs> dottore, you and your lovely wife must finish your breakfast pronto and go outdoors. It is a lovely day, and all the excitement of the pageant is waiting for you out there. Mr. Ronaldo, we've decided to wait down here until Jody comes down for breakfast. We couldn't find her room last night, as you very well know. I want to know where it is right now. The truth is, we're very worried about her. I am so sorry. I'm so stupid and negligent of me. It is because of the details of the pageant. Oh, would you forgive me? This, this madame just came for you here. <laughs> from Jody. Yes, as you can see, she is leaving for Monticello for reasons that you already know. Oh, forgive me, you can read it for yourself. I guess I don't have the courage it takes to go through with this after all. I thought I could do what was expected of me here, but I have to admit I am too frightened. The only way to solve it for me is to go back to Monticello at once. Please forgive me for leaving this way, but I was just too ashamed to face you. There's no reason why you can't stay and enjoy yourself. See you back home, love Jody. How is she getting back to Monticello? I have been given to understand that she is being given a lift this morning. Edge of Night is brought to you by Pert, the shampoo for bouncing and behaving hair, and by Bowl 3, detergent plus full strength fabric softener. Not long ago, my only exercise was climbing up and down a stepladder. Today, I'm climbing Eagle Mountain. Boy, have I changed my life for the better. Back then, antique stores were the only place I knew to buy antiques. Now I know what to look for. I get my best buys at yard sales. That's some change. And before I knew better, I had to buy boxes of this and bottles of that to get my laundry clean and soft. But Bold 3 Detergent Plus Fabric Softener changed that. Uh-huh. A product that cleans, softens, and controls static cling all in one box. Now that's a change for the better. Oh, I know. Only if it works. Well, Bold 3 works. Look at these jeans. Muddy, right? These were just as muddy. Would you ask more from a detergent? And talk about softness. I mean, this feels really soft. Now watch. No sticking, no crackling, no annoying static cling. 
Would you ask more from your fabric softener? Now that's some change. A change for the better. Bold three. I'm bouncing, but my hair gets so dirty and oily, it won't bounce. So I shampoo a lot, but then it can get so dry, fly away, it won't behave. But I discovered Pert. No other leading shampoo has Pert's cleaning conditioner. My hair's not over clean or over conditioned. Bounce! With Pert, it's so clean, it bounces. Bounce! Bounce! So manageable, it behaves. Whew, that's Pert. alone. Wonder if Dee Dee and I'll ever get around to having it together. some breakfast, huh? Uh, <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, well, how about, how about a cup of coffee? No, nothing really, thank you. Well, I suppose it means you want to get right down to it, eh? Yes. Well, go on. You've never had any trouble expressing what's on your mind. Well, I suppose it's a lot more difficult bringing attention to your own mistakes than it is to somebody else's. The fact is, I don't like myself very much this morning, Calvin. Yeah, well, I uh, have to admit to uh, knowing that feeling. I was up all last night trying to figure myself out. I'm glad Mitzi wasn't there so I could enjoy my misery alone. <laughs> Sometimes it's... Uh, it's a lot more difficult to uh, really feel sorry for yourself when there's somebody there to divert your attention. And uh, did you figure yourself out? <laughs> no. But one thing I do know is that I was wrong to accuse you of deliberately trying to hurt Troy. I know that you were just trying to do your job, Calvin. Well, I gotta tell you, feels a whole lot better knowing you realize that, Dee Dee. The fact is, I wasn't just trying to do my job as a cop. I was, I was trying to find Troy because I, I really thought I could help him. You know, I've spent my entire life trying to protect Troy, and I haven't done a very good job of it, or with you either, for that matter. I've been so rough on you, Calvin. I've dumped all my anxieties on you. And I, I came over here this morning to ask you to forgive me. Dee Dee, there's, there's nothing to forgive. I guess maybe I, I should have been more upfront with you when I was questioning you about Skipper. No, 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 no. It was necessary for you to ask me about Skipper to get to Troy. I even called Skipper myself last night. You know, I didn't call him to warn him. I just, I just wanted to see if Troy had been there. Well, Hattie. No. But then I guess you'll check all that out, won't you? <laughs> well, no. Actually, that's a, a task I'm leaving to somebody else. How come? I decided best if I remove myself from the case, Dee Dee. I won't be able to help you today. I got a full schedule. But I can give you the name of a good garage. It's right there. Actually, my car's just fine. My name is Damian Tyler. I'm with the Monticello Police Department. 
Why did you say so in the first place? Um, police, huh? Well, what can I do for you? Frankly, I'm looking for a mutual acquaintance, a guy named Troy Bannister. How's that again? Oh, come on, I think you've heard the name. Troy. Yeah, I know him. But, uh, I haven't seen him around here in quite some time. Oh, really? He hasn't come by lately? What do you mean by lately? Oh, the last 24 hours or so? Oh, no. No, I ain't seen hide nor hair. That's funny. I would have thought this would be the first place he would come to, considering the amount of trouble he's in. What kind of trouble? Well, you don't read the newspapers, you watch television. Troy Bannister killed a police officer. Don't say. I know Troy's a friend of yours. You've known Troy and Didi since they were kids, which means this would be a very natural place for him to try to hide out. Well, I guess you got it figured all wrong, because I ain't seen Troy since... Well, I guess you don't mind that if I check the place out. Wait a minute now, officer. Now, I don't see as how you got any right to wait just a minute. Look, I'm sorry to be so insistent. The information I have says that you are going to give Troy some transportation out of the city. Now, if that's true, I feel sorry for you. Because that implicates you in first-degree murder. I'd hate to see you get that involved. Okay, officer. I guess you're not so dumb after all. <laughs> I guess I sort of stretched the truth a little when I said I hadn't seen Troy in 24 hours. Actually, I saw him last night. You saw him here? Yeah. But I didn't provide him with no car because I didn't have any available. Now, the only car in this shop is that one, and that's in need of repairs. Look, uh, Skipper, why don't you just tell me where Troy Bannister is right yeah, now? I got one more thing to tell you now. And that's what Troy... That's what Troy told me last night. Now, he said he didn't shoot that cop, not intentionally. Now, he said the cop pulled a gun and fired at him for no reason at all. Now, the way it happened, that cop must have gone crazy. Skipper, maybe that's true, but Troy's going to get his opportunity to tell the truth. Wait a minute now. I, I got some work to do in the shop. Come on, Troy, Troy don't right do there. that. Look, Come on, Troy. Hurry. Don't. Now, you listen, cop. You turn around and walk out that door right now or Skipper's dead. Troy, I don't think you do that. I don't believe that for a minute. Neither do you. He's a friend of yours. I don't think you kill him. A cop oh. killer ain't got no friends. Now get out! Troy. Minutes made orange juice, Miss Annie. Thank you, Martin. Oh, boy, Sandy, we have the best of everything here. Big warm house, nice clothes, each other, and all the minute made we want. There's nothing like the fresh, delicious taste of 100% pure minute made orange juice. Make sure, make it minute made. And the best thing of all, Daddy. Hey, I just mowed 4,000 lawns. I don't have a sandwich appetite. I've got a manwich appetite. Yeah! The winning team doesn't have a sandwich appetite. They've got a manwich appetite. No skinny little sandwich makes as much of a meal as manwich. Your ground beef plus Hunt's manwich sauce. Thick with tomatoes, onions, peppers. Honey, I don't have a sandwich appetite. I've got a manwich appetite. A sandwich is a sandwich, but a manwich is a meal. Dee, now don't you think it's time we make our peace once and for all? I mean, we've been arguing all this time and we've been on the very same side. Kelvin, right now I am so mixed up about everything. I just, I've got to get my head straight. And what about your heart? Dee, Dee we have been separated for one reason or another for so long. It's about time we get together and stay together. Calvin, I can't. I can't think. I can't function. I can't do anything until this whole thing with Troy is resolved. Can you understand that? Yeah, yeah. I understand. Honestly. I guess we'll just... Yeah, Stoner. Calvin, it's Damien. Yeah, well, you're going to have to speak up, pal. I can hardly hear you. I can't talk any louder, so you're just going to have to concentrate. Look, I'm at Skipper's garage. Yeah, well, what's up over there? Troy Bannister is here, and he's nothing but trouble, Calvin. Well, what's happening? Well, he 
He's got the old man hostage in a room next to me, and he just won't listen to reason. Oh, no. Look, I don't think he's going to hurt Skipper, but I don't want to push him, and I don't want to call the SWAT team because I don't want him to be frightened. No, no, no the last thing we need are a bunch of sirens and bullhorns. Calvin, it's Troy, isn't it? Look, Calvin, it's your decision. You do whatever you want. My advice is for you to put yourself back on the case and get over here right now. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do better than that. I'll bring your sister with me. I'll see you in a little while. Yeah, Eddie, did you buzz? Yes, I buzzed. You heard the buzzer. That's why you came in here. If you didn't hear the buzzer, you wouldn't be in here. Am I right or am I wrong? It's not a federal offense to ask a rhetorical question, is it? What is it with this rhetorical? Will you talk English? Sit down. I got something I want you to take care of. Okay. I want you to call the florist. I want you to send some flowers to Ted Loomis. Why, Eddie, that's the nicest thing I ever heard. You really are a sentimental slob, aren't you? What do people know about me? What do you know about me? Do you know that I cry when I see a sad movie? Do you know that when I see a little dog or a little boy walking who's, who's crippled, I fall apart? I get a lump right here. You know, I stopped the car on the highway to get out and help an old lady cross the street. I like old ladies. They remind me of my, my mother. I want a tissue. You got a tissue? Yeah, the top right-hand drawer. See what you did now? You got me started. What was I talking about? Uh, flowers for Ted Lewis's <clears throat> funeral. Yeah, flowers. Send flowers. Okay, uh, how much do you want to spend? Uh, the sky's the limit. A hundred dollars. Okay, what, what kind? Uh, send my favorite flower, those, uh, those plants with the big red things that the companies give out, you know, at uh, the holiday. Nah, nah. All right, uh, send anything that's in season, but put the red bows on it. No, no, make that, make that white bows. It's a funeral tent. Gotta have class, you know what I mean? Ed, what do you want to put on the card? Card? What card? What are you talking about? Card? This has got to be an ominous. You can't send it with a card. I mean, you're going to send flowers to a cop. What am I going to say? Rest in peace, your bosom buddy, forever, Eddie Lorimer. Come on, use your head, you dummy. Yeah, of course. All right, take care of that for me, will you? Okay. And listen, uh, do me a favor. When you make the check out, uh, put it under uh, petty cash, office expenses. Office expenses? Yeah, office expenses. Put it under uh, bathroom tissue. I don't know, anything. You know something, Eddie? You're all heart. Hello. Eddie? Yeah? Joe. Oh, Joe, how you doing? Uh, listen, uh, how's the weather up there? Beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. And the uh, general condition of things, if you get my meaning, you know what I'm talking about? So-so. I mean, everything's fixed, you know? We got the girl under wraps, but... Uh, I can tell you she definitely will not make any telecasts today. When I'm sitting at your table, I'm as happy as can be. Your good cooking is enough to set There's some good country singers in my family and some great Crisco cooks. Like my Aunt Edna. She says Crisco makes her spicy apple muffins light and fluffy. And my cousin Martha says her onion rings don't taste greasy. Mm. Aunt Loretta, you gotta tell me how you made these turnovers, honey. It all started with a Crisco crust. Then I mix up my apples, cranberries, and cinnamon. I scoop it in the crust and bake. Then I put on the icing. The crust is so flaky. That's Crisco. Look for Loretta's family recipes in your favorite women's magazines. Crisco will do you proud every time. Every day, people face the moment of truth. The moment they decide if their dishwasher detergent did the job. If I have to rewash the glasses. Or didn't quite do the job. Spots. I have to rewash the glasses. That moment when. There better not be spots on the glasses. There are spots on the glasses. Try Cascade. See, most detergents can leave drops that spot, but Cascade's sheeting action leaves glasses virtually spotless. That Cascade moment of truth. Look at that shine. Now that's beautiful. For virtually spotless dishes, try Cascade and make that moment of truth your moment of glory. You did great, Cascade. I'll tell you, that sounds real good to me. You just keep away from the TV cameras, understand? And I'm very, very happy that the problem is solved. Yeah, but that's the point, Eddie. That's why I'm calling you, because I don't think the problem is solved. Hey, 
are you talking about? You just got through telling me that everything I know, was... Oh, I know. I know what I was telling you. But the problem is still going to exist even after the pageant is over. What I'm saying is, I think we may be making a big mistake in letting this girl go home after the show is over. She may talk. You see, so what I was thinking is, uh, maybe it's now uh, the right time to do something permanent. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you were thinking. I have told you a thousand times, if I told you once, you can't do anything to hurt this Travis kid. You understand that? What do you want to do? You're going to make this kid a national martyr? No, What's the matter with wait you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, listen to me. Her becoming a martyr doesn't matter after the pageant is over. You understand? But if she talks, that's something else again. So what I was thinking was having her disappear, you know, like somewhere between Raleigh Castle and Monticello. your costume, honey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it is a little bit silly, isn't it? You know, to tell you the truth, I've had enough of this game playing, so, um, why don't, uh, you just relax and we can call the whole thing off? A, a nice person. How, how did you ever um, get mixed up in, in something like this? <laughs> you, you know, I bet. I bet if, if, if these were under uh, different circumstances, uh, we might even be friends. <laughs> yeah, we still can be. What? No! Stop it! Stop it! Oh, what disgraceful behavior is this? How dare you? Miss Travis is our guest. She is to be treated with respect. Get out of here before I take care of this myself. Yes, it's Jody's handwriting. There's no question of that. And the tone of it sounds like her. Something doesn't quite ring true. This is so disgusting. I do not trust that man. He knew what Jody had planned. What are we going to do? Good morning. Have you seen Jody yet? No. But we've heard from her. We have this letter. What? She's gone to Monticello, according to this. Oh, I don't believe it. No, she wouldn't back out now. I just don't believe it. Well, it's all written right there. It seems very final. Are you sure this is her handwriting? Yes, we're sure. I'm sure she would have gone through with it. Um, for all we know, this may be a phony letter. They might have forced her to write it. Yes, that thought occurred to us, too. Hey, Mitz. You know what I found out? What? One of the waiters here says they have dungeons in this place. Real dungeons? Like in Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, but he's not exactly sure how to get down there. Good. You don't think Jody's in one of those things, do you? Well, if you kidnap somebody in a castle, where would you hide him? Hmm? Oh, look, maybe she's in her room sleeping or something. Yeah, right. Then how come they won't tell us where the room is, huh? Come on. We're gonna go find ourselves a dungeon. <laughs> Announcing Frito's brand, Lights. A remarkably light, crispy corn chip. New Frito's brand, Lights. Same great taste as Frito's corn chips, but lighter, crispier, incredibly munchable. Frito's Lights. The great taste of Frito's corn chips in crispy new Frito's brand, Lights. All my children. Well, I'm gonna tell Greg the whole story. Oh, no, yeah, you won't. Yeah, he's watch. gonna make Jenny see just what is what. He'll never lay eyes on you again. You got it? All my children. Miles, let me see that letter. Maybe there's something in it that might be, I don't know, a clue or a signal of something. No, you're not gonna find anything, I promise you. No, they wouldn't let anything like that slip through. And after she wore that dress last night to the party, there's not... 
A soul here at the whole pageant who hasn't noticed her resemblance to the martyr of Eden. I'm sure anybody could guess that she was going to make a statement today. Well, they didn't hear from me. What were you planning to do, Chad? Why don't you tell us? I'm supposed to make the opening speech at the satellite broadcast back to Eden. Yes, and what then? Were you going to put Jody in front of the camera? Is that it? Yes. There's no use in denying it now. But without Jody, my plans are ruined. Well, would you believe I don't give a damn about your plans? I'm just worried about Jody. Far down as we can go. No, this is just where the staircase ends. Oh, boy, this is spooky. It's got to be a lower level. This guy said something about a secret passage. Look, try that wall over there. No, pick up something and, and tap on the wall and listen for a hollow sound, and, and that'll be the secret passage. crunchy wheat taste of Kellogg's mini wheats, but the frosting side agrees with the little kid in me. The whole grain shredded wheat side to me is quite superior. The light frosting pleases my girlish interior. Kellogg's mini wheat cereals. Whole grain shredded wheat for the adult in you, light frosting for the kid in you. For me, the manly side of mini wheats is fitting, but the frosting's good too. And I'm not kidding. Being on the boat all day, Sure makes me thirsty. So I'm reaching for this. Noon Proof Nest Tea Iced Tea Mix. Nest Tea's as natural as all outdoors. You can tell it's no ordinary mix. Just look at that rich color. It tastes as clear as sunshine, too. Because now Nest Tea slow brews its tea and has just the right blend of lemon and sugar for natural sunny taste. Oh. New slow brewed Nest Tea Iced Tea Mix. There's nothing like it under the sun. Tomorrow at 8, 7 Central and Mountain, take the high road to adventure and meet a new kind of hero on the two-hour premiere of The Gold Monkey. Then at 10, 9 Central and Mountain, the Carringtons could lose it all in the explosive season finale of Dynasty. Tonight on ABC's World News Tonight, economics editor Dan Kortz asks, Are high interest money market funds a thing of the past? Are they still a safe investment? Is it time to get out? Could you do better elsewhere? ABC News, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. Why pay fancy weather? And Spencer Christian on sports. Plus, the latest update with Tom Snyder and Eyewitness News at 11 with Stormfield and Spencer Christian Sports. Channel 7 Eyewitness News, the number one news for New York.